There's just one left, it's me. And then you can all go and get drinks. Um, hopefully you can enjoy this at the same time. So I'm gonna talk about something today. I just wanna make you think about your data uh, in the company and your operational metrics and show you something that I think is kind of interesting that we did at Gengo a few months back where we opened up a lot of our operational metrics to the public in a way that I don't think anyone else has done in crowdsourcing, let alone uh, you know, other businesses. So um, how many people here have heard of Gengo? Hands up. Okay, like three or four people. My marketing is not going that great, I guess. <laughs> and is my clicker even going great? I don't know. How does this thing work? Does it work? It works? Yeah, okay. So uh, Gengo actually means language in Japanese. Uh, and we started the company in Japan. That's why there's a picture of Mount Fuji there. Um, and what we, yeah, okay. What we do is we do people-powered translation at scale. Uh, so that means we get thousands of translators around the world to do translations. And the reason we, we use real people in the crowd is that Machine translation is great, but it's still not at the level that it can give you a good quality translation. Uh, we offer 36 languages right now. Uh, we have now actually 14,700 translators. Uh, can anyone hazard a guess of how many words we've translated to date? Do you want to make a guess? 50 million. 50 million, someone else maybe? 200. <laughs> 200 million. It's actually 350 million words translated to date. Uh, and now we're at the rate where we're doing about four words every second. Uh, so. Uh, you could do the math uh, during my presentation if you'd like. Um, I don't know how to use this thing. Come on. Do I have to point it somewhere? There we go. Uh, so we work with small businesses. We work with bigger customers. Uh, we work with channel partners who actually resell our translation. Our typical customer might be someone like TripAdvisor. So TripAdvisor will translate thousands of user reviews on Gengo. Uh, another customer might be QuizUp. Uh, cool little iPhone app. They'll translate thousands of quiz questions using Gengo, um, all kinds of things. And the, uh, huh. <laughs> all the work is done uh, by people around the world. So people like Olga uh, in Japan, she translates actually Russian to English. Uh, people like Araja in Nigeria, he translates German into English. Uh, people, <laughs> yeah, of course, in Nigeria, right, of course. Uh, people like Peter in San Francisco, these people are all around the world and the reason they like working for Gengo is that they can work flexibly, uh, like, like a lot of crowd platforms, uh, they can earn money in their spare time and they can leverage their bilingual skills. And so these, these guys are actually pretty skilled. Um, translating is pretty hard, I don't know, can anyone here actually competently translate between two languages? Because I can't. Okay, yeah, there we go. So it's, a very, it's quite a rare skill to be able to do that uh, with competence. What we do at Gengo um, is maybe a little bit different to some other translation offerings online. So if you go and find a translator on Odesk, for instance, you kind of have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with that translator. We do something a little bit different in that we actually leverage the whole crowd. Um, and so we want our customers actually to treat us like a machine. Even though you've got human work going in, we want our customers to be able to say, okay, I'll order at 3 p.m. on a Sunday in Spanish and I'll get the same quality as I do at 4 p.m. on a Wednesday into Korean. Uh, we need to, people to be able to treat us like this kind of elastic machine. And over time, what we've built up uh, is we think a lot of expertise in that. Uh, this ability to take all these varied human inputs and produce something that's very, very consistent and high quality. And the way that I think you can do that with a crowd is really through two things. You've really got to be on top of your data. That's the head side of it. Uh, but also you've got to respect the people working for you uh, and have that heart. So all these people are real people. Uh, we have to respect them like human beings and give them chances to, to have fun and to, to get value out of the platform. And what I've been really proud about with the company over the last year, certainly, is that our teams have reached this level where they're doing a damn good job of this. And one of the things that we do internally is this thing called dog fooding. I don't know if anyone's heard of that, but dog fooding is comes from a phrase of eating your own dog food, so trying the thing that you actually produce. And so everyone at Gengo every month actually has to do dog fooding. That's one of the things I make people do. Um, and the reason to do that is to say, okay, well, let's see what we're producing. Are we doing a good job? And also, let's compare it against our competitors. And what we found over the past six months or so was that we were doing really, really well. 
and we were doing well on things like speed and quality and far better than our competitors. So we were getting jobs back uh, within minutes when we might give it to a competitor and it might take hours or days or never come back. Same with quality. And we were reaching that level of consistency that, that meant we, we were pretty proud of our operational excellence. And so that was the first reason that we thought, huh, maybe we can start to open up our data and show people because we're really proud of this stuff. That was the first reason. The second reason uh, is the translation online is a kind of crazy, hyperbolic, crowded marketplace. And so if you do a search for online translation, you'll get 50 results, and most of them will say that they're the leading translation agency. And people will say, we're the best, we're the fastest, we've got the best quality. Uh, but they have no way of backing that up at all. And so the customer conversation uh, is not very sort of educated, nice one. It's, it's basically about who can shout the loudest. And we thought, we don't really want to play that game, because how can I play the game of saying I'm the leading one when the guy next to, me, next to me is saying they're the leading one as well? The other thing was that I don't know how many of you guys work directly with customers, but you know, when you're a small company, when you're a startup, as we were, you make a lot of mistakes, and you kind of end up over-promising and under-delivering sometimes, which is always the worst thing to do. So early on, we might say to a customer, oh, yeah, we can do this project in four weeks, and then eight weeks later, we hadn't done it, uh, we felt pretty stupid, um, and you know, we learned that the hard way. And we learned that it's much, much better for us to have an honest customer conversation and say to the customer, look, this is what you're going to get. Uh, this isn't going to be perfect. Uh, we might not be able to hit that deadline that you had originally planned. Here's the real one. Uh, and have an honest conversation. And that's always been more productive. And so we, we kind of wanted to be honest and, and different to our competitors. The third thing, I got some really good advice that I read about business a couple of years back. Uh, and it was the advice that in business you should never, ever tell a lie. So that sounds really obvious, right? Like we all think we're honest people, uh, and I'm sure we all are. But if you think about it in business, the consequence of even very, very small lies can be very, very big. So think about um, you know, when you're talking to your investors, for instance. You might show them last month's numbers because they were really good, but you don't really want to show them this month's numbers yet because they're not that great. And you might wait until next month until they're better. Or what if someone in your team leaves the company? How do you explain that to the, to the employees? Do you tell them the absolute truth, or do you try to paint a picture that says the company's much better off with a different team and, and try to gloss over it? And I've, I've really found that following this principle of never, ever telling even a small lie uh, has been very valuable to the company. And so that's a principle that we have internally, but also uh, with our customers. And so that was the third reason to try to say, OK, let's open up our, our data. Uh, let's be completely tr transparent. And so what we did a few months ago was we launched this site, uh, gengo.com uh, open data. Um, and it's been very successful. Uh, it's a place where we share a lot of the operational metrics that used to be internal KPIs for our team, uh, but now are public. And as I said, I don't think anyone else is doing this in the crowd space. Uh, so it's been pretty unique. Some of this stuff is a little bit inside baseball, but uh, I'll, I'll show you some examples of how it works. But in our different areas that we feel are important to the customer and to us, we've shared all these different individual metrics. And so for speed, uh, quality, support, capacity, and the platform itself. I'll start off with speed. So one of the things we share about speed is what's called first action time. And so if you're ordering a translation, and it gets done by a human being, um, there's not really that many ways to make the translator type faster. Like, translators can work at a kind of 3,000 words per day, 5,000 if they're doing something really easy, but you can't really speed that up. But what we can try to make sure is fast is if you order the translation, that time between you ordering and someone picking up the job should be as small as possible. And I would say back in 2013, the beginning of 2014, the 95, 95th percentile first action time uh, for us was about 900 minutes. And so it meant that 95% of jobs are going to get picked up with, by someone within 900 minutes or so, which wasn't that good, really. Um, but what we've successfully done over the months is brought it down to about 89 minutes. And so 95% of jobs now will be picked up within 89 minutes. The actual mean, the average, uh, is much, much lower than that. It's about seven minutes. But we want to capture uh, the sort of the majority of the customers. And so we share that on the site. And what you can see, for instance, 
uh, is that in December there was a bit of a spike. And it's kind of simple. In December, the translators go on holiday. And they don't like working. <laughs> it sucks. Um, but we know that now, and our customers know that now, and, you know, and actually our teams can now acquire more translators before the holidays and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but you know, what, what we've done there is with this honesty, you can, you can visit this page. It's online. It's updated every week. Uh, you can see that stuff. Another thing we share, this is on our quality page, is our rejection and our revision rate. So when customers order through Gango, they have the option when it comes back, if they really don't like it, they can reject it and get a full refund. Thankfully, uh, I think it's like 0.01% of customers right now do that. So it's very, very rare. Um, customers can also request a revision. That's a bit more common. But what you can see is we've brought that down from about a 7.7% down to about 1.2% uh, over the last 12 months or so. What we do on the site as well is we explain what the metric is all about. So customers can get an understanding of why we track that, why we think it's important. Uh, we have a page about capacity. This one's a bit more fun. Uh, but this so shows where the translators in the world are coming from. Uh, a lot of them tend to be in the US for us. A lot of them are in Japan because that's where we started. One of the other things we show lower down this page is our acceptance rate. So if you want to become a translator on Gengo, you have to take a, a couple of tests. It's really hard. Uh, so our acceptance rate now is about 4%. Um, if you compare that to Harvard, Harvard's is 5.9%. So I feel pretty good about it. Uh, <laughs> And, and what you can see as well is that acceptance rate is pretty consistent. You know, we require, we acquire more and more translators all the time, but we're, we're very, very stringent. And that helps us keep that, that quality high. The other thing we do is that we share, um, I think these are customer support uh, feedback comments. So if you get your, an order in and you contact support, you'll give us some comments. And we actually share every single one with the personal identi personally identifiable information removed. So we don't actually do what 99% of the websites in the world do, which is pick the, your friends who have used the service and how great they say it is and, and do that. We actually just show everything. Uh, and we're not perfect, you know? Um, and I think like, it's always a little bit scary when you try to release this stuff because you know there's going to be some shitty comments like that. Um, I did a screenshot yesterday when I prepared this presentation, and we got some really bad comments. Um, but normally, this page is actually a lot more green than red. Um, but the thing is, like, our customers really, really like this. And I'll, I'll get onto that into a second. It's much, more, it's much more effective for us to say, OK, this is everything. These are all the comments. And now you can actually judge, as opposed to just picking two or three where they said the service is great. Because I can find comments saying our service is great really easily. So I just pick as many as I want. But showing everything, that's much more gutsy. Um, another thing we do is for the customers who consent to it, we show the actual translations that they've ordered. And so no other service in the world does this at all. This is like completely unfiltered. Personal identifiable information is remo removed, but everything else is there. And so there's pages and pages and pages of this stuff. And so if you're going to order like English to Spanish, you can go and look that up and you can see if it's a good translation or not. And you can see on average, does, does Gengo do a good job? And I would love to see more services do this kind of stuff. You know, imagine if like, you know, every meal that a, a restaurant served to its customers was visible online. Imagine if you know, every example of a service that was delivered could be available for you to see as a customer. It would be great. So um, maybe one out of the 50 of you might be interested in doing this. Um, but if you do want to do this, I've got a little bit of advice on how we did it. Uh, first of all, I'm someone who believes very much in, in trying to build something really simple and then building on it, doing it step by step. So you don't need to do something really fancy straight away. Uh, we started off with a Google Doc, and then the website like, loaded off the Google Doc, and that was it. Um, now we have a very sexy metrics API, and everything's all cool and scalable, but uh, we did it step by step. Um, the other thing that was very important to us was to have some principles about this. So um, the first thing was that we weren't going to post data and then remove it later if it made us look bad. So I have this persistence principle. The other one is completeness. So just like those comments we were showing you, like it would, it, there's no point if we just filter out the bad stuff. It doesn't make any sense. So we want everything to be complete. Um, and veracity. And so obviously, you, know, you have to trust us that this stuff is real. And what we're actually looking to do longer term is to get a third party to kind of verify this. And maybe it's like a law firm, or maybe it's a, another translation provider, or something like that. 
the last thing is that if you do this kind of stuff and you start releasing more and more metrics, you've actually got to have a lot of alignment in your company about what they mean. And uh, it's not so much purely about control, it's also just about what the customer can understand. And so an example would be if you're talking about how many active users your service has, like does that mean active today or active in the last two months or active in the last year? You've got to make sure everyone within your company has the same definition of what this stuff means. Um, and actually, that's something that we you know, found as we were releasing this data. We had to make sure everyone was using the same queries, the same language, that kind of stuff. Uh, so you have to be careful about that. The result has been actually fantastic. And so uh, this is one of our customers. This is kind of from uh, Zendesk. And the kind, of, the kind of conversation we can have now with a customer is great, because we can just say, hey, this is what we do. And you can look at it, and that's, that's kind of it. I mean, the conversation's a little bit more complicated than that, but you, it's a very, very simple way of showing the customer what you're about. The other nice thing is that uh, the technical customers really tend to geek out on this stuff. Like, people love it. You know, people, some people just love charts. I'm one of those guys. Um, but people, people really love that ability to kind of see inside your business. Um, investors love it. Okay, so I can go along to an investor now, and actually they can see the majority of my, my business before I even turn up at the meeting. Uh, but also, they can see that we're way ahead of the competitors in this respect. So um, it's it's very, very nice conversation to be able to go in and show this stuff that's already public. Um, and then also our translators, um, they really like it as well, because they can sort of feel like they're part of something bigger. You know, when we're pushing them to pick up jobs faster, when they're getting pushed for higher quality, they instantly have this sort of bigger picture feedback loop now. They can see that they're part of this business that's getting better and better all the time. The other nice thing that sort of we didn't think about beforehand was it's great when we're bringing new people into the business. So if I'm hiring someone for a role, um, and if they're on the ball, they've probably looked at the site beforehand, and they can talk about our data in an educated way, and I can tell that they're a really good fit for the company you know, within a few minutes. It's great. And that's it. So um, check it out. You can email me if you have any questions, et cetera. I'd love to hear your feedback on it. I'd love to see more people doing this stuff. Um, and you know, just to think about, in, in terms of your business, have a think about some questions, uh, why you're not doing this already, uh, and why you might do it in the future. That's it. Thank you. Great.